Now, you might remember this bike from a little controversial YouTube short that I did where we went through this and the cost of repair was gonna get very close to the cost of this entire bike. Not brand new, but picking up a secondhand one and we we're gonna have a very difficult conversation with a customer. That conversation has kind of happened and she has given us the go ahead to take a bit more apart and show you guys what's going on here while she takes a bit more time to think about uh, the prospect that's in front of us. So we've got opportunity in this video to show you the whole story. They'd been taking this bike to another local shop who, which is a giant franchise who don't do Bosch motors. She'd been taking it in and getting it serviced and they'd done things like change the chain and, and bits and pieces like that for her and like change brake pads, but they hadn't done anything with the Bosch e-bike. In their words, they weren't licensed to repair Bosch motors. They hadn't mentioned to her that the bearings were feeling a bit rough, but they haven't offered any sort of solution until the point where she came to us, knowing that we are a Bosch service center and said, it's broken. And by this time it's too late. Now what I suspect has happened is that water has got in here because once this bearing here like this has collapsed, water's probably gone straight into that case ruin the BCB but I don't know that for sure that's what we're about to find out there's other possibilities that could be going on here uh, and that is the wiring loom we can see a couple of bits of frayed wire and exposed stuff going on so it could be some water ingress there uh, and this might be repairable and we still don't know the condition of the battery because when we plug the diagnostics in the only thing that we can see right now is the head unit so first thing to do is start at the next possible thing and get this motor out and see if this is even repairable uh, if it is, great, I can talk you through some repairs, and if it isn't, what the hell are we going to do? With the motor out, you can tell it hasn't been serviced probably ever, because one of the part of the routine service things, you, know, you might have seen in a video we did before about getting this out and giving it a good clean, is that we would have removed all of this dirt build up and it is kind of important because this is all designed to run at a certain temperature and this build up of dirt to act as an insulator so part of Bosch service procedures is drop the motor inspect all these electrical connections inspect all these gaskets and give everything a good clean as well so this has definitely not been serviced for a very very long time okay we're going to break the case in and uh, get this off and see what can be salvaged So this is actually looking a lot drier, but all this metal, this is all part of the disintegrated bearing. So there should be a bearing here. You can just see what's left of the outer race. So this should be the outer race. There should be a whole bunch of balls and an inner race here, but that's all just disintegrated. In fact, it's probably what's left of it is here in these bits. And that's what's collapsed. I think all of this rust that we can see in here is all evidence that this has been compromised by water at some point. In fact, I'm starting to see all this around the PCB area. It's definitely not looking in good condition. Okay, we've got the motor all apart and it's really evident that quite a lot of water has got in here. So even some of the most worn out e-bikes I've come across, you've not seen this amount of rust and water ingress. In fact, there's even a bit of mold on the inside of the case and stuff. My major concern is this PCB because we're just getting nothing from the diagnostics at all. It's just not even pick it up and there's no reason why the wiring loom looks okay. I'm pretty convinced there's a problem with this PCB. Now, as a mechanic, things like changing these bearings that's all what we do, like cleaning all the rust out of this sort of thing and giving it all a good clean and a service, that's something we can do. Um, even this, I think I'll be pretty okay. We're trying to remove that stuck in a race and replace it. But anyway, let's go and have a look at some solutions, shall we? Okay, I've quickly put that back together while we work out what to do next. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, dead easy. Now, if the original shop said, oh, you've got a bit of play in your bearings, I'd get that sorted. While we still had an electronically functioning motor, we could have done something about it. You see, Bosch do provide this service kit here. It's about 140 pounds. We take this faceplate off, replace those key bearings, make everything watertight again. We'll probably go a little bit deeper and replace this bearing as well. And we could have salvaged the job um, for a fairly reasonable price. But now we have this 
um, completely toasted PCB. The diagnostics are not picking up anything. And as you've seen from the inside, there's a lot of rust and a lot of stuff going on in there. It needs quite a lot of bearings to be fair and quite a lot of labor to really strip that down and get it repaired. Now, the way I see it, we have three options. The first one, we can attempt a repair. The big thing with this really though, is that PCB. And that goes beyond what most bike shops and mechanics can do. I reached out to a couple of PCB repair places and they weren't willing to give me an accurate quote without sending the motor away to them. And we do need to do that, as you saw on that teardown, that that PCB is attached to that motor, which is then glued into the casing. So we're going to incur some costs by sending it away. Once I describe the damage, I either had the PCB had water damage, they were not 100% sure that they could definitely repair it. They wanted to see it before they could quote. So we still don't know if that's actually a viable option or not. So the cost might be somewhere in the region of 320 pounds, but we don't know if that's actually going to fix the problem or not. Okay, option two then is to try and find a second-hand motor. And just scrolling through eBay, searching for a Bosch performance line motor, you see a few come up. Uh, then nothing here in the UK, really. There's 440 pounds here from Algeria. There's another one around a similar sort of price from Germany. Nothing in here really gives me the reassurance that it's something durable and worthwhile doing. The other problem with this is that the contract is between me and my customer. So if there's a problem with this, she can come back to us and demand that we put it right. That's part of the sales of Goods Act. We're liable to that and our insurance company as well. So now I don't mind taking a risk on this sort of thing with relatively low value items, such as uh, re recently we did a Campagnolo nine speed uh, build and I had to buy a nine speed rear derailleur from eBay because we couldn't get a new one anywhere. That is a risk I don't mind taking. 450 odd pounds e-bike motor and all the labor associated with uh, taking it out and fixing it is probably a risk I'm not willing to take. The third option then is we just go for a full replacement and we can do that. We have to apply to Bosch to get a replacement motor. We have to sort of say why we're having to replace it, why this is unserviceable and give them loads of evidence to be able to do that. And the cost is something like 714 pounds to do that. So big chunk of change. It does come with a new warranty, comes with all our reassurance, etc., that this is going to be a working item and the warranty from Bosch. Now, the reason to say it's a whole new motor is again, we can't buy the spares. That service kit I showed you earlier is the only spare that you can buy. We can't buy anything else. And this is something that I really do think that all e-bike manufacturers really need to get on top of is allowing us to purchase spares. You know, Apple have opened this up to people to repair iPhones. So why can't Bosch and Bafang, etc., open up spares available to service centers like us and lots of other specialist places to actually repair these things rather than sending them to landfill? So what are we gonna do? It's gonna be a brand new motor. I'll explain a bit more why, but I think this is gonna be the most logical and cost-effective way forward, really. And so here we go, brand new motor. You can see it's got all the new tamper-proof marks and it's absolutely solid. It comes with a new two-year warranty. A couple of little things led us to this conclusion. One, we did sort of the rest of the service work on the bike, so we wanted to get a good picture. What was gonna be the total cost to get this bike on the road, you know, roadworthy again, and us being confident that we can give our customer a really well-functioning bike. They were complaining about the gear skipping and our initial reactions were, oh my God, it's gonna be a new chain, a cassette, you know, what's causing it? Once we'd actually clean it, in fact, Ty has to take the credit for all this because once we cleaned all that muck off, here's the reason, this is actually a nine-speed Link Glide cassette. Now, if you're not familiar, Shimano have two different types of cassette, have HG, Hyperglide, and Link Glide, which is fairly new. And actually, you can see this cassette is actually in pretty good condition. Only a little bit of marking here. There's no mushrooming going on at all. So underneath all that dirt and mark was actually a very good condition Link Glide cassette. However, the previous bike shop had fitted a Hyperglide chain. So those two things were not syncing up um, and working well. We also had a look at the chain ring. And although the chain ring is quite worn, um, we have tested out where the chain looks to be okay. So we're gonna be fitting a new link glide chain with this. And then I think the rest of the bike is actually in really good nick. The brake pads are all good. So most of the other service work has all been kept on top of. So it kind of makes sense to get this in there, 
and turn it into a functioning bike again. Right, let's get started. Picking up a little couple of points some of the more observant of you notice from the last video we did on e-bikes, and that is that these bolts actually use a T30. Um, some e-bike motors actually use a Torx Plus, which looks like this, slightly different shape, but this doesn't fit with these bolts at all. So look out for that. Some Bosch motors use Torx Plus. This one, even right here, Torx T30. So Torx T30 it is. And of course we get a new bracket as well with all the new vibration gaskets and everything. So this is probably the way forward. It works. I'm kind of happy that we've got a working e-bike again. The bikes generally mechanically sound. The wheel bearings are good. The brake rotors and stuff have been replaced fairly recently by the other bike shop. The gears are all working now. They've got the right chain on it. Mechanically, it would pass a PDI inspection. Cosmetically, the bike is not in good condition. If you were to see this come up second hand, you would be doubting its reliability. There's rust all over the fork stanchions and around the seat post area, and there's you know just the spokes nipples started to go rusty, that sort of thing. The bike doesn't look like it's in great condition. And if you were to advertise this for sale, I think you'd be very, very lucky to get anything close to 500 quid, which is way less than what we probably just spent repairing it. So with that in mind, we should probably go and talk about that. But before we head over to the till and work out the final bill, I just want you to have a think and maybe have a Google around. If you were to try and find an e-bike of similar sort of standard in your local area, Facebook Marketplace, eBay or whatever, what sort of value would you be looking at? I think you'll be able to find something probably a year to two years old around the 800 to 1000 pie mark. Let me know in the comments. Right, let's go tally up. Okay, this is a tricky one. So let's see if we can fight through this together. The cost of the motor was 714 pounds. We've talked about that before. Our labor cost on this was 70 quid, which we've just put it under our standard full service package. The actual work we did on it is fairly minimal, even though the amount of to and fro in and the admin uh, was quite substantial in getting to this point, the actual physical work done to the bike was, was fairly minimal. And of course, a new shift cable as well. So total bill comes to 787 pounds and 99 pence. Now, I would say a massive thank you to the owner of this bike for allowing us to film it and showcase it to you guys and really hopefully uh, deliver a really strong message to get your e-bike serviced so hopefully you don't come into the same situation so we have dipped into our pay it forward fund and we're going to donate 150 pounds of, of that money to this project bringing the total down to 637.99 now a big part of the decisions on this was the customer's enthusiasm for trying to repair something rather than just send it to landfill and have to replace it that's like their own personal belief if you like i really don't know where i sit on this i feel a little bit uncomfortable with it if i'm completely honest but i always try and ask myself about do the right thing and the great thing about this channel and the community is that comment section so now it's time to get down there in the comments and let me know what would you do if you were in this situation? What would your local bike shop do in this situation? And if you like this sort of content and you want to see do more, then please use that super thanks button, donate a few quid, and hopefully we'll be able to bring you more videos like this, which are both educational, real case studies of stuff that we go through day to day here in a bike shop. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Take it easy.